Hello everyone, Mark with High Tech Legion. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the NZXT Kraken X31, showing you the performance of this all-in-one CPU cooler. Uh, we note right on the front here, a nice six-year warranty from NZXT. We're going to be doing an installation with this cooler, showing you com some comparison benchmark numbers, just the kind of temperatures we receive from our Intel 4770K at stock speeds and at a 4.4 gigahertz overclock, um, giving you some decibel numbers on the fan speeds of this cooler, uh, showing you just what you can expect from it, and also giving you our final conclusion. Stay tuned. Alrighty, we can see all of our accessories here. Baggies of screws, our back plates and mounting plates. That's labeled AMD. So we have our mounting uh, for our, our fan screws to attach the fan along with uh, washers to the radiator. And we have our Intel mounting hardware along with our Intel back plate for the different sockets so you can adjust it inward or outward I should say for the 1366 socket you can adjust it inward for your 1155, 1156, 1150 socket. And that's our back plate. We have of course your AMD and Intel retention for the top of the pump with the clip that locks in to hold the pump down and then your screws would be here you tighten up your thumb screws and that locks the top of the pump to your CPU. We'll take a look at the pump here it does come pre-applied with thermal paste does have a nice, very, uh, very nice copper base. The screws on the bottom here are recessed behind the copper so they won't ever interfere with your uh, CPU or make any kind of contact. Neoprene tubing and we see our 120 millimeter radiator. The fins are pretty dense but we can still see through them okay. Uh, so it should be decent for airflow to move through the radiator, but with the density of the fins, we will want to make sure that we watch for um, dust building up between the fan and the radiator itself. The radiator does have your uh, inf serial information on the bottom. It is a very nice matte black finish, very nice texture, very smooth. Um, you can see that even though it is painted, that the screw holes here were either tapped after it was painted or we make sure made sure that they were not uh, blocked at all by any kind of paint so you there should be no issue at all with screwing in your fans there are holes for on the back to mount to your case if you got longer screws I'm sure you can mount a secondary fan um, with the longer screws to put a push-pull configuration on the radiator uh, now if we look here we have this little fan header here that has two four pin connectors on it. One is the PWM. You can see there are all four pins inside. The other one only has three pins inside. So we would want to connect this to the PWM to control our fan speed. The other one is for the pump. So we connect the pump there. And then this actually plugs in on the bottom of your motherboard. And that gives it the power that it needs and allows uh, through the software, the CAM software, it allows you to adjust the speed of the pump and it also it just gives you some basic uh, monitoring of your temperatures, fan speed, uh, and your pump speed. Um, and we can see that the installation manual here is not very in-depth. It gives us a basic uh, understanding. So if you're familiar with mounting um, different heat sinks from this little installation uh, guide you could probably understand how to install this um, there is a more detailed guide online and also here we see on the back of the X31 pump 
block here. It says connect pump power before turning on. Um, also, the back of the block does not light up on the X31. But we'll see that as we get into the installation. Stay tuned. Okay, we're going to go through the installation. Here you can see our back plate. Uh, because of the 1150 socket, I have the little sliders towards the middle here so it lines up with our socket, with our holes in our motherboard, I should say. And that can go on in any direction, it's not uh, directional. So we'll go ahead now and take one of our Intel mounting screws here and we'll screw it down. Okay, so we have our screws secured here, mounting our back plate uh, to the motherboard. And what I usually do for these coolers is just kind of drape the tubing over the back of the case. Uh, what you want to do for the retention clips here is the clip that will actually screw down, you can see fits over the pump and the block. So we want to just fit that over like so, bring it up out of the way, we want to get our bottom click with the notches facing upwards towards the retaining ring at the top. Get that in place so that it sits flush with the uh, black surface here of the actual pump here. And go ahead and get our ring back in place. Then the plastic clip just simply locks into our retaining ring. There's four latches that lock down and you're all set. So we'll go ahead and put our bracket down here now. And now you see there's simply your four thumb screws that we just go ahead and put onto the that are protruding here from what is holding the back plate in place. I usually just put one, uh, each one, not tight, just to where you feel a little bit of tension so that it's actually holding the cooler in place. And then we'll go ahead in an X pattern and tighten these down to securely get a nice seat and also to spread that thermal paste uh, evenly across the processor. So we'll go ahead and get all these in here. And you can see I'm mounting this with uh, all four uh, memory slots full. Um, there is no restriction at all. So we don't have to worry about any kind of interference with the memory slots. And now we can see our block is very securely mounted. Um, when you're actually putting in the studs to hold the back plate in place, there's a little bit of play. Uh, where it seems like you know even after you tighten those studs down the back plate still has a little bit of movement and that's only because when you asphyxiate this top plate it will actually secure everything together as one solid unit so now we're going to mount this on the back of the case no just kidding okay we're going to put it on the inside here and before we do that because we have the flexibility with this all-in-one and with these uh with this tubing here I'm going to go ahead and set it out of the way and I'm going to get the fan mounted just so that we're not too tight working inside the case here. Um, I was going to mount it beforehand, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea in case you forget to mount it and now you already have your heat sink locked down. Um, it's very simple just to mount this fan on. You will use the four, four of the, they actually include eight, so you could mount a fan to the back of the reservoir also. The longer uh, fine thread Phillips screws, they go right through the slot here. And again, same thing with these. I usually just get them started uh, by hand. Make sure all of our holes are lined up so that we don't go ahead and tighten down because even when they're in there, there is still some movement on the fan and then we can get one that's not lined up properly with the hole and then we're loosening screws. and. So instead of overworking ourselves, I usually just get them all started by hand. And then I'll go back and tighten them down once they're all started. So now we're going to go ahead and put this on the back of the case here. And we'll line up our holes with the holes in the rear of our case. And then the four uh, smaller included black Phillips screws. I usually use the, uh, the five and a quarter drive base 
to set my screws on just because it keeps it up out of the rest of the chassis if you set it on the table or you know you don't want to end up dropping uh, screws in the middle of the installation trying to reach for them not being able to reach them so I usually put them in a place where I can easily get to them setting them on the table is fine and we're gonna start with one screw and you can see then it holds a radiator in place and we go through the rest here so once that's in again the thermal take chassis has the rubber so you can see it still moves a little bit because we have that rubber on the back to prevent from vibration so now by doing that by having the tubing on the other side of the processor from where the reservoir is going to mount and it gives us a nice little curve um, and the tubing is not twisted too tightly uh, the neoprene is very flexible um, so it could even be twisted a little bit tighter than that um, but it does stay nicely out of the way and we have our fan mount here so we're going to take our pump connector here connect to our pump plug our PWM fan connect to our PWM um, but this does include this little Y splitter here to hook up our cables for our pump and our fan of course I probably route that a lot neater out of my case so at the bottom of the motherboard uh, we have USB USB uh, USB so we plug that into the USB header and the um, that allows you through the cam software to control fan speed uh, the pump speed it is variable um, it does not light up um, the Kraken X31 does not light up I believe some of their other units do um, and of course you always want to make sure that your power and everything is connected power to the motherboard is connected um, before you were to turn this on because if the pump isn't running of course your processor is going to get really hot really fast and overheat um, and also it could uh, you want to make sure that the pumps properly primed by having everything plugged in when you're starting up your computer so that is the installation I hope you enjoyed stay tuned for some benchmarks Thanks for watching our video review uh, and installation of the NZXT Kraken X31. Don't forget to visit the HighTechLegion.com website for the full review. Also click right down here on your screen the subscribe button to watch our future video reviews. You can also find us at Twitter at Twitter.com forward slash HighTechLegion and on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash HTL Reviews. Thanks for watching.